Teaching class is not just about going to a class and showing people a bunch of movements. That's just one small component of it. It's not even just going to a class and showing people or teaching people the knowledge that you have. When you become more advanced as a teacher, you really must rise up a step or two to an energy level. When you first go to, to, go to a class, there's 60 or 70 people in the class. They're all individuals. All their energy is going every which way. And it's the job of the teacher to round that energy up and hold it in a concentrated, interested way. And that's the art of being a teacher. It doesn't matter, you can be the world's greatest martial artist, but you also may, might be the world's worst teacher. And if you are, then you, and it doesn't matter how great you are at the martial arts, you can't, you can't get that information across to people if you can't gather their energy in and join their energy together. And this is the art that I'm trying to put across and it takes a lot of work and a lot of experience in order to get to that position where your own energy can be the focus of a class and it can round up that. It's a bit like a really good collie dog or a really good Australian Kelpie or a cattle dog here who are fantastic at rounding up the animals, the cattle or the sheep. The dog is in a constant state of awareness. It's just, its whole mind is centered upon that herd of cattle or sheep or whatever it is. As soon as one strays, bah, it's off, it's got that sheep back into the herd because he knows, especially with sheep and cattle, if one sheep goes out there, all the rest could follow it if it's the lead sheep. You don't want that to happen in a class. You want you to be the focus so that the people can learn from you. I'm not saying my students are sheep or cattle, of course, but that's the idea. You must be in constant awareness of what's going on in your class. You must be aware that John down the back there, he stands down the back all the time. Why does he stand down the back? Maybe he's a bit insecure. So you know that every now and again, you just make your way from where you're teaching out front, down through the crowd, over to John. And you give him a little bit of personal help, personal ideas as to, as to how he's training. And that makes him feel really good and really special. You're not only just helping him in that way, you're also dragging his energy back into the class as a whole. You might notice someone over there not very interested, talking all the time or something. So you again have to find a way to bring that person, that's a sheep running off, so you've got to grab that person and bring them back into the fold, so to speak. It also has a, a wonderful secondary effect as well. When a, when a good communicator holds a class, and that communicator is also well versed in his subject or her subject, and can also do it, as in the martial arts, you might, you've got to be able to do the martial arts, as I've been always saying here on these tapes, you can't just go and read a book and then go and teach martial arts, you have to be, have to be really top rate yourself before you can teach it. But then you've got to be a good communicator as well. And what happens is, after each class, or even just a, a f small way through the class, you notice people who were maybe a little bit timid, maybe a little bit pale or ill, start to shine. Their skin changes color. They start to get some energy back. And so what happens is a healing happens within that class. And it's your job to make that happen by joining all the energies in that class together. Maybe a student over here has an imbalance in their body, and, and, and we all do it from times. If the teacher knows his craft, and he can then take all of that energy and join it together, what happens is the energy will join in with that person who's out of balance and it will rebalance that person. Even if you just take one person 
who may be a little bit out of balance, you notice someone's a little bit, eh, a little bit over here, a little bit ill. And you go over and you just find some reason to rub the person's arm, your hands will go there automatically. That's another craft of the teacher, which I'll get onto later. You find some reason, I'll put your hand here, to, just a little stroke, see, eh, like that. Nothing special, you don't say, I'm going to heal you now of this. Just find, so, come here, Eli. You just find some way. They're doing pung, right? Someone's doing pung on, in the Tai Chi form. You say, oh, look, you got over your hand, see this hand here, uh, up here like this. Now, you see what I did then? I didn't just say, put your hand here. I went like this. Put your hand here like this, you see? Now, although this is simulated, of course, if there was something wrong with Eli and I picked up on that through the energy interacting, I might have to put my hand around here, around his lung area. And I might say, well now see the scapula here? Okay, at this point in here has to be activated and, 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 and so on and so on and so on. Then I might end up by going, oh yeah, sure, good job, yeah, good job, yeah, but they don't know I'm fixing them up or, or try and, trying to help, thank you, Eli. Right? All, the, all they think is, oh, it's coming out, he, oh, okay, he's telling me where to put my hands. And you'll notice that that person's energy is being be beginning to be, be balanced straight away. But the amazing thing is that if you just balance one person in the group, then join the whole group together, the whole group starts to balance out. It's like a, one of those barometers with the stuff in them that go up and down. You pour some water in here and the other side comes up and evens out. And that's the craft of the teacher to be able to do that with a class and hold their attention. Another part of the craft of a teacher which you only learn through experience, you don't just, you, okay, you might, think, oh gee, I've got to go to the toilet, so I've got to leave the class. You don't just leave the class and go to the toilet. You give them something. You might be learning the form or something. So you say, ah, you make it interesting. So you say, ah, yeah, we're going to learn Pung. Okay, that's for, bah! and you do a, bah! An explosive Fa Jing movement. Everyone goes, whoa, whoa what was that? Whoa, oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yeah let, let's do that. And then you toddle out and go to the toilet because the energies come up here. So while you go to the toilet, the energies up here and they're all going, oh, how did you do that? Oh, what's this, what's that? Let's try that move, blah, 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 while you go to the toilet. When you come back, the energy's still up here. Everyone is still gathered in that group. They, the sheep hasn't gone out and everyone's followed the sheep. They haven't all scattered. There are times when you may want that to happen, like when you're coming to a break. This is also, see, the craft of the teacher is so complicated, but it's, a, it's an, a, quite an amazing thing. You can affect healing within people and within a whole group of people. So you've got to realize, okay, you're looking at your watch, okay, we've got a break for lunch at uh, one o'clock or something. So you keep watching and you have to adjust what you're teaching them so that their energy is up here while you're teaching them and then you slowly bring that energy down to a more normal level yeah, so that you can break for lunch. If you break for lunch up here when everyone's going oh yeah bah, bah, well what was that then they're gonna think oh ooh. the energy goes like this you don't want the energy in a class to either go what like this and then up, down like that. You want the energy to go like this. And then you want to bring it down slowly as well to a more normal level so that they can then break and go and have their lunch. Then you've got to start all over again, bringing it back up again for the second part of your class or your workshop. And that's the craft. That's what I'm trying to tell you how to do this. So how do you bring the energy up? One of our main instructors up in my London workshop came up to me and he said, I've been watching how you teach and I'd really like to learn that. He said, um, you know exactly how to link things together so that it slowly brings that energy up to the next step, up to a certain level. And you see, in order to learn, your, your energy must be at a certain level. You can't be... Uh, and then think, oh, I'm going to study something now. You can't do that. You have to be excited.